everyone i'm ferd and welcome to my video this video i'm making some decorative nautical posts uh, about 10 years ago i had a man want me to make these things for him there was probably about 15 of them and he was lining them along his driveway at some lakefront property he had down in tennessee this is a picture of what they looked like when they were finished the longest post is five foot or 60 inches. The next longest would be 30 inches. And then the smallest one there is 24 inches. There was a couple of them that I made for my son from the leftover wood that I had up to about a year ago before he sold his house and these kind of went with it, these things were still in good shape. So they, they'll hold up for years and years. It's been almost 10 years since these things were made. But anyway, I, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made these things. Please forgive me in this video because I'm fat. <laughs> I don't know why I haven't drank in 30 years and, uh, I, I, I know at the time I didn't miss lunchtime, so it was a lot of bologna sandwiches back then, but anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, hope you get something out of it, I don't know why I, I didn't post this thing 10 years ago, but uh, here it is now, let's make some nautical posts. First, I want to show you the posts that I've cut. These or five foot long. They were cut from an eight foot piece of uh, fence post. Most of them are like six inches in diameter. Now to cut these things, I used a 12 inch DeWalt chop saw and it didn't go all the way through it. So be prepared to get creative or whatever if you don't have a saw that big to cut through them. These are two and a half foot and two foot. And then if you notice up here on the top of them, I took a router and I went around and rounded the edge of it. These I've got up on the saw horses and you can see I took uh, straps and I've got them clamped together. What you want to do when you get to this point is kind of tap on them and, you know, get them to, you know, settle in together. You might have to turn them a little bit to get them to fit real nice but these three are together and I'm ready to go ahead and do what I need to do to put them together so they don't fall apart on me. This was some galvanized uh, roofing flashing that I had laying around and it was uh, like a whole roll of it that I had. It was like actually a little wider than that and I cut it into the one and a half inch strips. I measured six inches up from the bottom and then six inches down from the top. From here to the end of that is like I said that's two feet which gives it enough to bury this thing in the ground get it this is going to Tennessee so it's going to probably be well enough below the frost line to where it's not going to get pushed back up but this goes in the ground and holds the the whole thing steady and then from the the top on this side down I'm going to do six inches too so those are some pretty easy measurements to to remember this you can start anywhere around it because this is going to get covered by rope and you're not going to see it. And we'll nail it in. Get that started and we're just going to wrap it all the way around and make sure that it's six inches pretty even all the way. Keep it nice and flat. Pull it tight. You might want to wear gloves. Keep keep your uh, hands from getting cut. What I've done to kind of help me tighten this strap is I put a pair of vice grips on the end of it. So I'm going to wrap it around 
Make sure I've got it six inches. And I'm going to just tap on the vice grip. And then go back up here, put another nail. I'm using, uh, just using galvanized roofing nails for that. And then we'll take some snips and cut that off. Now, what I do to make this really, really tight is I'll, instead of nailing like where it's solid against the lumber, I'm going to come in just a little bit and where you could push it in. Uh, looks like it's out about maybe a quarter of an inch right there. So we're going to drive a nail in, into that right there. same thing up here at the top of it. You can hear by the metal that it's actually starting to get pretty tight there. So put one in here. That's pretty tight. And then do that on all three sides. Okay, now I've got both the straps on there. Flip this thing back around. And I'm ready to take this off of it. And it's, at this point, I mean, it's solid as a rock. These, these things aren't going anywhere. And now we can start putting a rope around it. These take about, probably about 10 and a half feet of one inch rope to go around them three times for each one of these so you're looking at for one post uh, at least 20 feet of rope minimum figure an extra six inches to a foot for each one of them so you got something that you, you can pull on to get it tight with let me get my uh, rope ready I'll let you take a look at it it's a 300 foot roll of uh, manila rope. It's just regular uh, landscaping rope. It's good for outdoors. It should last a pretty long time. So let me unroll some of that out and get that going. Okay, the rope's not cheap. So I've got it pulled out. It's not cut. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this thing, get it around there. This is, this is going to be the front where your shortest piece is. And then we want this to end up back here on the back side of it. I'm going to go ahead and flip this back over. To this part right here this is going to be the back side where you're not really going to be seeing anything I'm sure there's other ways that uh, that this could be done but with the size of rope that I've got, this is the best way that I've figured that I can do it. What I'm using here is an electrician's staple. Um, you can find them in the electrician's electrical part of the hardware store. These are 9 16 inches wide, I think, and then 
like one and a half inches the depth of them. So I'm going to start my rope back here on the back side of it, but start on the outside of it. And then your first one's going to go up against the sort of against the bottom of your your piece of steel there. And let's just tack that and get that held in place. And I'm going to put another one over here on this side of it. And I'm going to use probably about five or six of these across the back of it. Give you a little bit closer look at where I'm nailing here. And then you can see, I didn't get, I, I couldn't find any that were wide enough to fit across the entire rope or that would have been idea. So where the rope has individual ropes in it, I'm putting one on the outside here and then I'm going to go up, kind of skip one because this this is the same rope and then I'm going to go to this one up here If you, you can see real good there that I kind of stitched it. There's uh, actually five nails holding that in, and that, that's plenty enough. That's going to hold it um, probably for the next 20 years until they rust away. And then all you want to do now is uh, go ahead and pull your rope tight. I got it really tight going around there. And I've got just that one holding it. And then that way, this way, from here I can go ahead and, and just tack this other end in, pretty much the same way I did. But this time, I'm going, um, instead of starting at the end of the rope, I'm gonna work towards where the end of the rope is gonna be. This is actually for cutting rubber hose, but it works really well on rope too. And that's what she's going to look like from the front side of it. And it's all pretty tight. It's not going to go anywhere. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you got uh, some good information out of it if that's something that you were looking for and uh, also I thought that I would finish uh, this thing up with uh, the shirt that I was actually wearing when I made this thing I still got it and uh, I still wear it but anyhow thanks for watching hit the like and subscribe button
uh, I've got a lot of stuff that uh, that I've found that I'm going to be putting up here as soon as I can. The editing for these things is uh, it probably takes longer as the project sometimes. So, like I said, hit the like and subscribe button. Go watch another video and have a good day.